All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now, though, please join me in welcome a media mogul, a gentleman who knows the business of media and has been in it for a while, also an authority in his field. Join me in welcome Mr. John Momo as he comes up here. To read and discuss. But don't stop clapping until he gets here. Be kind to our readers. Your Excellency, the Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to be part of the audience here today to witness this book launch. Very many precious people have written about doing business in Nigeria. Um, God bless them. Jim Ovia has written an insightful, enterprising, practical, and excellent book on how he's risen, risen from zero to $16 billion in Africa. And if Africa is the new frontier, and Nigeria is the trigger that will make that happen, Jim Ovia has pulled the trigger. Here's an excerpt from the book, which I commend for everyone to read. It's about logo and branding. And there's a quotation from Jeff, Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO, who's the wealthiest man on earth today. A brand for a company is like a reputation for a person. You earn reputation by trying to do hard things well. And so Jim writes, when I was writing the feasibility study of Zenit Bank, as part of my license application. I gave a great deal of thought about what name and logo would best befit the institution. Anyone who has studied business knows that these basic elements of branding are extremely important components in any commercial venture. Under Nigerian law, a bank is not allowed to use any part of the name of an existing bank. So I began with a comprehensive list of what names were off limits. The banking industry can reach national and even international markets. I knew it was important to look for something that would not be limited by way of geography, of culture or language. I started researching with those qualifications in mind to find a name that was unique, one that would be memorable to Nigerians, to Africans, and to international markets. I knew it was important for the name to have a wide and lasting appeal. In my research in various Thesauruses and dictionaries, the word Zenith came up in numerous languages, including English, French, Latin, and Spanish, all with the same definition of the top or the pinnacle. When I found the word, it was more than an aha moment. My whole being said, Wow. This is it. And once I had my bank's name, I turned my attention to designing the Zenith logo. And in preparation, I started many of the best known, most easily recognizable logos in the world. Nike, Exxon, Mobile, Mercedes-Benz, and McDonald's. I also started the most successful bank logos, such as Citibank, Chase, and Bank of America. The first thing that struck me 
was their simplicity. I noticed that even though they cut across many industries, oil and gas, fast food, sportswear, banking and finance, many of the logos, nonetheless, had three things in common. One, they were simple, easy to read and understand. Two, they spelled out the name or initials of the company. And three, many featured the color, color red. And look around you today, and it's painted in red. Congratulations, Jim. Once more, please join me and acknowledge Mr. John Momo, OON, Chairman and CEO of Channels TV, one of the independent news stations, a 24-hour news station, multiple award-winning one. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, another friend of the author of the book, who happens also to be quite prominent in Nigeria's financial history, having taken a bank from being a fourth-tier bank to a first-tier bank and presided over it for quite a few years. He's since then gone on to pioneer another company, which is called Coronation Capital. Ladies and gentlemen, a true gentleman, please make welcome. Agbo J. Imokwedez, he comes to speak about the book, Africa, Rise and Shine. You know the routine. Please keep coughing till he gets here. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a rare privilege for me to stand in front of you on this great day and this great occasion where we celebrate. I, I think by this time, I shouldn't regard Uncle Jim as one of Africa's greatest, I think one of the world's greatest financiers and bankers. Now you'll find that from an age perspective, I'm, pro I'm probably the furthest removed from the individuals who have been privileged to read excerpts of Mr. Ovia's book. And, um, there's a quote from Jim. It says, anything that I have done, you can do too. And I speak to Africans, indeed, the youth of Africa, as I quote Mr. Ovia. I'll read it again. Anything that I have done, you can do too. Whether you're an entrepreneur with a vision or a professional seeking to expand your business and explore uncharted territory, you will find a wealth of guidance in these pages. I offer a hearty welcome to anyone ready to benefit from and contribute to a rising, thriving Africa. Before I read, it would be remiss of me not to share with you two secrets today. Secrets that concern myself and Jim Ovia. When Jim was founding Zenith, I believe I was at best an officer in a bank, indeed one of the banks that Jim referred to in the book that crashed at a point in time. That's another story. Uh, one thing you'll find about many of the men who have founded great banks in Nigeria is they, they work for banks that crashed. You learned what not to do in banking. Um, however, I'm obviously like Jim's younger brother. Uh, you could call him almost like a father to me. And as a young banker, there were a lot of myths around the man called Jimovia. He didn't sleep, he didn't eat, uh, he could see from the back of his head, um, you know, all types of myths. Indeed, we were befuddled by the fact that he ran a bank whose financials were audited and approved by the central bank in record time. And anytime any of us tried to do the same,